Good morning to all of you. This coming week we will celebrate uh, 4th of July, the Independence Day. And as we have done in the past, we begin with the Pledge of Allegiance, and then after that the singing of the Star Spangled Banner. So may we begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. we will go unto the altar of God. God my soul. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, let us confess our sins to God and prepare ourselves that we may worthily participate in this holy sacrifice. And now please make an examination of your conscience. Okay. Having made an examination of your conscience and confessing your sins unto Almighty God, May we now recite the second act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one of the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, 
all the saints and you, my brothers and sisters, that sin not where it be. By my God, by my God, by my own great God, I ask the blessed Mother Mary, all the saints and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. For your penance for the next three nights, besides offering your morning and evening prayers, I ask that you take one of the three readings as prescribed by the church for this Sunday to reread it, to meditate, and to ask that the Holy Spirit might give you wisdom and understanding for you to be able to understand another part of the kingdom of God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us into everlasting life. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again <coughs> renew us. Amen. Show us your mercy, Lord. Amen. Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray, take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Because God did not make death, nor does he rejoice in the destruction of the living. For God Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you are the consolation and salvation of those who trust in you. In our deepest sorrow, and despair, our help is assured because of your love and compassion, so that we may always call upon you and seek your aid. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit and our one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God Almighty, in whose name the founders of this great country and won liberty for themselves and for us, and lit the torch of freedom for a nation being born, grant that we and all people of this land may have the grace to maintain our liberties and righteousness and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Eric, will you proclaim the word? A reading from the Book of Wisdom. God did not make death nor does he rejoice in the destruction of the living. 
For he fashioned all things that they might have being, and the creatures of the world are wholesome, and there is not a destructive drug among them, nor any domain of the netherworld on earth, for justice is undeniable. For God formed man to be imperishable, the image of his own nature he made him. But by the envy of the devil, death entered the world, and they who belong to his company experience it. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Today is gradual. O Lord, you brought me up from the netherworld. You preserved me from among those who are down in the dead. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, as you excel in every respect, in faith, discourse, knowledge, all earnestness, and in love we have for you, may you excel in this gracious act also. For you know the gracious act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that through he was rich, for your sake he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. Not that others should have relief while you are burdened, but that as a matter of equality, your abundance at the present time should supply their needs, so that their abundance may also supply your needs, that there may be equality. As it is written, whoever had much did not have more, and whoever had little did not have less. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Alleluia, alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a large crowd gathered around him, and he stayed close to the sea. One of the synagogue officials, named Jairus, came forward. Seeing him, he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him, saying, My daughter is at the point of death. Please come, lay your hands on her that she may get well and live. He went off with him, and a large crowd followed him and pressed upon him. <coughs> there was a woman afflicted with hemorrhages for twelve years. She had suffered greatly at the hands of many doctors and had spent all that she had. Yet she was not helped, but only grew worse. When she heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd, she touched his cloak. She said, if I but touch his clothes, I shall be cured. Immediately her flow of blood dried up. She felt in her body that she was healed of her affliction. Jesus, aware at once that power had gone out from him, turned around in the crowd and asked, Who has touched my clothes? But his disciples said to Jesus, You see how the crowd is pressing upon you, and yet you ask, Who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it. The woman, realizing what had happened to her, approached in fear and trembling. 
she fell down before Jesus and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has saved you. Go in peace and be cured of your affliction. While he was still speaking, people from the synagogue official's house arrived and said, Your daughter has died. Why trouble the teacher any longer? Disregarding the message that was reported, Jesus said to the synagogue official, Do not be afraid, just have faith. He did not allow anyone to accompany him inside except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they arrived at the house of the synagogue official, he caught sight of a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. So he went in and said to them, Why this commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but asleep. And they ridiculed him. Then he put them all out. He took along the child's father and mother and those who were with him and entered the room where the child was. He took the child by the hand and said to her, Talitha, Kumi, which means little girl, I say to you, arise. The girl, a child of twelve, arose immediately and walked around. At that, they were utterly astonished. He gave strict orders that no one should know this, and said that she should be given something to eat. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Niech będzie pofolonius Christus. One of the synagogue officials named Jairus came forward and upon seeing him fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him saying, My daughter is at the point of death. Please come, lay your hands on her, that she may get well and live. These words are taken from today's Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. And as the sun was setting, all those who had any sick, who were sick, with various kinds of diseases brought them to him, and he laid his hands on them and he cured them. Words taken from the Gospel according to St. Luke. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, I've heard the story of a college class that were taking their final exam and they wish to advance their degree in the science of physics. As everyone took their place, the teacher said, this is going to be 
for some easy and for others difficult. And your final exam is on the blackboard, which is behind you. Now the teacher had pulled a screen over the examination. And upon lifting the screen, there was one word, why? Well, after getting all the papers, there were those that wrote and wrote and wrote page after page, trying to think of the answer to that one question, why? The one that received the highest grade answered that one question with one answer. Because. You know, there are people that have said to me, you know, Father, why, why do you make the, the bulletin so long? You know, it takes me almost a week to read it. You know, as Christians, we are given a toolbox by which we advance in our faith. There are some of you, if you have Bibles, I wonder if you could produce that Bible or remember where you put your Bible. There is no company that does not prepare their employees to understand the mission of that company. You know, there are those that come to, to church and to worship. And we are so fortunate that in our faith, in our denomination, the Word of God is now a solemnity. You can't get much higher than a solemnity. This past week we had the feast of Saints Peter and Paul, but that was not a solemnity. That was an observance. The Word of God heard and preached was established by the organizer of our church, Bishop Francis Hogan. And of the stories that I've heard of Father Hodder, who became Bishop Hodder in 1906, depended upon the Word of God as his instruction, as his manual, by which he grew in wisdom and understanding. So why do I give you Every week, 10, 12, and I think this last time, I think there were 14 pages. A simple question, why? And I'll give you a simple answer, because. Jesus, when asked why he taught in parables, he said, because given unto you, <coughs> are the secrets of the kingdom. But how do you know the secrets of the kingdom if you are unfamiliar with the Word of God? We do not have the luxury of walking daily with our Lord. And even in His day, there were no manuals, there were no instruction booklets, of the good news that he preached. But if we look closer, we realize that he fulfilled all the prophets. He fulfilled the message that there was one to, to come. And we remember when we, at the end of Mass, we say, and the Word became flesh. 
There are scripture passages that I go back to that help me to grow in wisdom and understanding. I think about Philip at the Last Supper. And I know you heard this before. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. To this Jesus said, have I been with you all this time and yet you do not know me. For I say unto you, who, whoever has seen me has seen the Father. My brothers and sisters, to grow in our faith, one must understand the wisdom, the teachings, and the miracles of Jesus. And I know that within the good news of the evangelists, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and of the writings of St. Paul and Peter and James and John, we are given the opportunity by which we grow in our faith. And that, why is that important? You know, I'm actually not only the chaplain of the Eastern Diocesan Mission in Evangelism, but I'm also a core member of the National Mission in Evangelism. And there is a common thread with the understanding that Jesus was to send out his disciples. You are his disciples. You come in contact with people who are struggling, people who are sick, people who are lacking in faith. Remember what the Lord said, I didn't call you to be served, but rather, rather to serve. He also gives us the tools by understanding his word in which we then go out as his witnesses to bring the good news. What if Jesus did not call 12 disciples and that Jesus himself was to be the sole emissary and ambassador? Jesus would have gotten worn out pretty fast. But he called others to come and to be witnesses, to preach the good news. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, why? Because I want all of you to grow in the wisdom and understanding and that the Holy Bible and the words and the miracles and the the preachings of Jesus concerning the kingdom should not be strange to you, but that you may grow in wisdom and understanding as our blessed Lord. And so today we hear of a miracle, of two miracles. Last week we heard of the teachings of wisdom and so, may you allow that which is contained within our bulletins, those sections in which scripture is used, be for us a part of our toolbox by which we grow and learn and understand what it truly means to be a witness as a witness unto our Lord and to rely upon the wisdom and the teachings of Jesus. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. I be 
me leaving, walk upon God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, be God not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Return, O Lord, save my life. Rescue me because of your kindness. Let us pray. 
Accept these gifts that we offer unto you, Heavenly Father, as we celebrate our independence. May freedom ring throughout this great land. Fill our hearts, Father, with a burning desire to serve you in all truth. All of this we pray through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your poor hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. He is ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You gave your Son power to heal and perform signs and miracles to reveal your glory, recognizing Jesus as Lord of all creation. May we rejoice in him as we listen and obey his word. Therefore, on this day, we join with the voices of angels and archangels, along with all the saints and the entire church. And we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our proud bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true Orthodox and Catholic faith, which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. In our prayers, may we pray for the sick, the suffering, and the dying, the hungry, the homeless, and the unemployed. May we pray this day for peace, in our world. May we remember all children who are abused and neglected and pray for them as well as all abused and neglected animals and all victims of violence both here and abroad. In our prayers may we give thanks for all those who serve in our armed forces who were instrumental and are instrumental in giving us freedom and liberty, peace and justice. And Father, may we also remember all who are present here, whose faith and devotion are known to you for whom we offer or who offer up to you the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for the hope of salvation and deliverance and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with and honor above all others in memory of Mary, the glorious virgin, mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ, also your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering and that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people. Through Christ, our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering, and make it pleasing to yourself, so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, 
and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death, in order to manifest the infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful, and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being he lives among his people. At that solemn moment so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven to you, God, his almighty Father, and giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, in his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant table, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which a high priest Melchizedek offered you a holy sacrifice and immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and who now sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, life, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master, merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord, amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, Bless and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching, how and following divine example, we say with confidence,
future, and by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, as also Andrew and all the saints, grant us peace in our day, that being supported by the help of your mercy, we may be free from sin and secure from all disturbance, through the same, Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. For ever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us to receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church. And grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom. For you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for our judgment or condemnation. Though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become our safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master, awaken in us a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God, grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father, in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> My dear brothers and sisters, as we prepare to share the Eucharist, for those who will not be receiving the Blessed Eucharist sacramentally, let us now offer an act of spiritual communion. Let us pray. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord for all the graces he hath rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. Receive the body and the blood of Christ.
He will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from their faces, the reproach of his people. He will remove from the whole earth, for the Lord has spoken. The Lord be with you. Lord Jesus Christ, may your death and resurrection be the hope of those in the grave. Through this Eucharist, may we and all who have gone before us rise up to meet with you in your heavenly kingdom. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, as we, your people, gather on this day, we seek your blessings to rest upon our great nation. May the leaders of our nation gather together in peace and harmony as we celebrate our independence. May the truth of the gospel of your Son bring us into an understanding of true freedom. And all of this we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit and our one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Go, the sacrifice is offered. of our worship be pleasing to you most holy trinity grant that the sacrifice which i though worthy have offered up into the side of your majesty be acceptable to you through your mercy may be effective for ourselves and all those for whom we have offered it through christ our lord amen, amen. may the almighty and merciful god bless you the father the son and the holy spirit amen, amen. The Lord be with you. And also A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Lord, Lord, Lord. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found the life, life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness of darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light, so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who are begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks be to God.
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, now, as it shall be, Lord, and ever, and ever. And for the repose of the souls of our late departed brothers and sisters, as well as for all our intentions. For the deceased, eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. May they all rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 